Some Afghan warlords are not taking it easy with the Taliban. They have never supported the group, and despite the takeover of Kabul, there are dissenting voices. Being one of the most dangerous countries globally, Afghanistan has various ethnic and tribal groups headed by these warlords. These warlords are so influential that countries like America acknowledged them and accommodated them in certain areas. These seven warlords give the Taliban a run for their money. Number 7. Gulbuddin Hekmatyar Gulbuddin Hekmatyar is also known as the forever survivor. Because he survived the harshest regimes controlled by pro-Soviet groups, the Taliban, and the US-backed governments. Therefore, he has seen the worst of administrations and managed to scale through. He fled Afghanistan when he was scared of the pro-Soviet government, but returned in the 1990s with a customized outfit he called Hezbe Islami. This security organization was established with the support of the Central Intelligence Agency. Although he has been dormant for a while, he is likely influencing the government in Afghanistan secretly. His supporters held rallies and public meetings in parts of the country to drum up opposition for the Ashraf Ghani government. This Afghan warlord is feared worldwide because he has lots of secret dealings that may have gone unnoticed. Hekmatyar is accused of killing thousands during the Afghanistan civil war in the 1990s. He is ruthless for both family and friends, which earned him the title of Butcher of Kabul. He is also a bitter enemy of Ahmad Massoud, a man we would later discuss. He also launched a failed coup against President Najibullah, which eventually fell. He was responsible for most damages in Kabul between 1992 and 1996 that killed thousands of civilians. In 2016, Hekmatyar and his group signed a peace deal with the Afghanistan government, and all his sins were pardoned. In the fight between the Taliban and the government, he survived the warring factions and remained on the right side. Number 6. Ahmad Massoud Ahmad Massoud is an ethnic Tajik who led the resistance force against the Taliban in Panjshir Valley. He is a young warrior and the son of Ahmad Shah, an anti-Soviet war hero. Since the collapse of the Afghanistan government in 2021, he has emerged as a prominent face of the anti-Taliban movement. To this day, he has been fighting the policies of the Afghan Taliban since it took over power. Massoud has attracted several anti-Taliban groups to his domain to join forces to fight their common enemy. He has many fans who support his ideology, and his popularity is a threat to the group. Hundreds of fighters have joined his group and are joining forces to pull down the almighty Taliban. Massoud wanted to rally resistance to the Taliban after the US forces withdrew from the country. But the government soon collapsed and the Taliban took over. If it were successful, it would have been one of the ways to tap into the family legacy of resistance. His father has been dead for over two decades and was reputable for charismatic guerrilla warfare. After the Soviet Union invasion of Afghanistan in late 1979, Western powers sought ways to support the resistance and found that Massoud was the best positioned to bring their ideologies to fruition. By then, he was already building and training his forces as he switched his focus to the greater threat of the Red Army. His triumph over the Taliban from 1996 is born out of the sense of nationalism and deep religious belief. He believes the group has distorted Islam for their purposes. Number 5. Mohammed Atanur Mohammed Atanur is the former governor of the Balkh Balkh province and a warlord from North Afghanistan. He is famous for fighting the Soviet Union and the Taliban. He has not always been on the bad books of the religious group until he fell out with them. He owns a special militia group which he calls the People's Uprising against the Taliban. When his enemy took over Afghan, it was rumored that he fled the country. Aside from the physical might he wields, his Jamaat a Islami is one of the strongest political parties in Afghanistan, known as the Teacher. Noor served as the commander in the Northern Alliance under Ahmad Shah Massoud. After establishing the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan, he was appointed as the governor of Balkh province. Mohammad Atanur and his colleagues have sent signals to the Taliban, suggesting that they are not against any form of negotiations. However, surrendering was the last thing on their mind. He insisted that the Taliban is only arrogant because it won militarily. Noor is recognized as a political force to reckon with in the Balkh province. He is also a key player in the transport industry, including developing the rail line in his country. Noor's recent pledge to mobilize his province to fight the Taliban is nothing new. He led his forces against the group in April 2018 despite several pledges to stand down. Although the nation's reputable warlords haven't made a substantial move against the Taliban, it is unclear what the future holds for the dominant group. Number 4. Abdul Rashid Dostum you may have heard about Abdul Rashid Dostum and all he did when he was the vice president of Afghanistan from 2013 to 2019. He was accused of rape and war crimes, 
leading him to seek asylum in Turkey before the Taliban takeover. He has fought the Taliban, Soviets, and Noor, to whom he lost the war for control of Balkh. He also played a crucial role in the US-backed Northern Alliance's fight against the Taliban in 2001. He reportedly came into the country but later fled after the Taliban's takeover of Kabul. He is probably not running and may be regrouping to come back with a higher force. This time, he has returned as an asset to the CIA. He changed sides to the Mujahideen fighters just before the Soviets retreated. He foresaw America's victory in 2001 and aided the coalition forces. In 2018, he was accused of massacring hundreds of Taliban prisoners during the 2001 war. One of the ruthless things he did was stuff insurgents into the shipping containers until they suffocated. Dostum is famous among the Uzbek community and has an active militia comprising 5,000 to 6,000 fighters. Most of his supporters call him Pasha, a term used to refer to an honorable person in Turkic Uzbek. The Taliban is scared of warlords like him, as they are a threat to his existence. Experts say negotiation is the only way forward for all the warring groups in the country. Number 3. Abdul Ghani Alipur Abdul Ghani Alipur is a warlord that hails from the Maidan Wardak province in eastern Afghanistan. He is the leader of the militia group called Hizbe Wadat that fought both the Taliban and the US-based government. His current moves are unknown, but we know that he surrendered to the Taliban, who later let him go. Rumors have it that he has joined the resistance forces in Panjshir. He still controls over 10,000 fighters, who are armed to their teeth. His group recently gunned down a government aircraft, meaning that they would do well in typical guerrilla warfare. The government launched an attack on him and his group, vowing to punish the warlord. This attack is the latest in the history of bloody frictions with the government. Some months ago, security forces opened fire on his supporters, killing a couple of them. He has widespread loyalty among Hazaras, a Shiite community that makes up most of the population in Maidan Mardak. Although Kabul sees people like Ghani as agents of turmoil, their supporters see them as the only hope in the face of a corrupt government and violent insurgents. Attempts to arrest him in 2018 resulted in clashes that left about seven civilians and officials dead. Alipur hasn't opened up on the number of fighters in his militia, but sources say it has at least 2,000 armed men. His group says they were forced to take up arms because they were killed daily. However, the government says they are better off joining Afghan security rather than doing it illegally. Number 2. Abdul Rab Sayah Another warlord that heads one of the most dangerous forces in the world is Abdul Ran Sayah. He is the leader of the Itihad al-Islami and the only Pashtun warlord who fought the Taliban. He enjoyed close ties with former Al-Qaeda boss Osama bin Laden and former Afghan president Ashraf Ghani. He is said to be behind the idea of bringing Osama to Afghanistan after the Sudanese government rejected him. Not only is he connected to those who matter, but he also has close ties with the Taliban's lead negotiator, Sher Mohammed Stenekzai. Sayaf fought against government forces and Soviet occupation forces in Afghanistan during the 1980s. He received massive support from the Saudi Arabia government. In 1985, he established a university as an Afghan refugee camp, which he described as the preeminent school for terrorism. Ahmed Yusuf, one of the masterminds of the 1993 World Trade Center bombing, was a student at the school. Even after the post-war period, he retained his training camps and used them for military training and indoctrination of recruits. His human rights record became abysmally worse after the forced withdrawal of the demoralized Soviet forces in 1989. Sayaf is a strong opponent of the Taliban movement, which explains why he joined the Northern Alliance. He was the only Pashtun in the group fighting against the Taliban until others joined him. Number 1. Mohammed Ismail Khan Mohammed Ismail Khan is the leader of the Jamaat-e-Islami group and a former minister of the Ashraf government. He is since known to oppose the Taliban leader and fought against certain insurgencies that have swept many provinces in Afghanistan. When his forces were defeated, the Taliban captured him and placed him under house arrest. Although he is within their jurisdiction, they may use him to gain legitimacy. Due to his working relationship with the Iranian government, he proves to be the bridge between Sunni and Shia in Iran. Khan is said to be one of the most controversial warlords in history. Reporters Without Borders charged him with stifling the press and attacking journalists. Unlike most Mujahideen commanders, he isn't linked to large-scale massacres like those committed in Kabul in 1992. In July 2021, he led hundreds of his supporters to join forces with the Afghan armed forces to defend the city from the Taliban offensive. He was later interviewed by the Taliban, where he claimed to have joined them. After negotiating with them, he was allowed to return to his residence. He now lives in Mashhad, Iran, and is said to be responsible for the capture of Herat by the Taliban. 
The Taliban had initially targeted him in 2009, but he survived the suicide blast that killed four of his bodyguards. Well, there you have it. These seven warlords are kings in their own right, and the Taliban has nothing on them. Do you think there is another warrior that stands a fighting chance with the Taliban? Please use the comment box below to tell us what you think. See you in the next episode.